A very warm welcome to St. Peter Mancroft Church. Uh, today's a Wednesday, uh, and every Wednesday at one o'clock we have a short reflection, um, and it's live streamed as well as being for any who are here in the church. If you're visiting the church and just enjoying looking around, then do please carry on with that. But if you want to just listen in to the reflection, then that's, uh, of course, absolutely great. My name's Edward Carter, and I'm the vicar here at St. Peter Mancroft. Today was to have been my colleague, Fiona Haworth, giving the reflection. Um, she's unable to be here, in fact, so it's me today. Well, I recently read um, the well-known science fiction novel called Dune. I've got the copy right here in front of me, um, by Frank Herbert. Uh, Dune, and it's recently been made into a movie uh, as well, a very good movie, although it's only part one of the book, in fact, they're still making part two. There was an earlier version of the book made into a film back in the 1980s. Um, amazing film, sometimes a bit difficult to follow. Um, but Dune is, um, well, it's a well-known book, science fiction, if you're into science fiction, um, and it was written now quite some time ago. It was one of the early wave of, of good science fiction, written in 1965. Some call it the finest science fiction novel ever written, and it's almost certainly the best-selling, in fact, over all those years. And like all good science fiction, it's set in the far future, of course, um, a, a time when you have to imagine how things will have changed, and it's set largely on a planet called Arrakis, um, where there's a very valuable commodity um, called one or two different things, but it's a kind of spice, a kind of drug, really. Um, and um, this uh, spice comes from Dune and makes this world a very important place because it's a commodity that has uh, some amazing properties, slightly disturbing maybe, but uh, makes it very much sought after. And Dune, as the title of the book indicates, um, also reflects the fact that Arrakis is a desert world. Essentially, it's a desert world, very dry. Um, sand, sandstorms, um, lots of perils to do with um, being in the desert. And there are these amazing giant sandworms as well, hundreds of meters long, which burrow their way through the sand. And uh, if they hear a tiptoe on the sand, they'll come and gobble up whatever uh, they can find. So you can see it's a book full of imagination on the part of the author, um, but also it's really, it's good science fiction because it's a story that includes lots of well-described, in my mind, human emotion, um, also politics and technology, as good science fiction does, and actually, which is why I've really enjoyed rereading it, ecology. Um, we reflect a lot more now than we did 50 years ago about the planet we live on, um, and the way in which we either don't care for it or safeguard it, or try to safeguard it. And Dune, I think, as a novel, uh, points to some of those great ecological themes, which is why it's been fascinating reading it uh, this year for me. Um, and in fact, as I read the book a few months ago, um, my mind kept imagining our Earth um, being drawn back to the precious place that our own Earth is, not least um, because actually, of course, we've just had a very dry spell of weather, extremely dry. People have been speaking about drought. I don't know whether you have any uh, lawn or perhaps a favorite park that you go to. Chances are the grass is no longer green at all. It's parched, turned all dusty and brown. Um, and indeed, many of the plants uh, that need water are struggling uh, to keep going. Um, so it's been a reminder, the weather, over the last, well, probably a couple of months almost, um, of the very precious uh, and invaluable nature of water as part of our ecosystem, as part of the life of our planet. And in the book Dune, the novel Dune, water, in a way, is the most precious thing of all. It's guarded carefully. Uh, there are these special suits that the uh, native dwellers on Arrakis wear, still suits, that collect all the water. Uh, you can't um, evaporate any water off your body or breathe out any water. It's all collected by an ingenious system and then used again. Water is the most precious thing of all on Dune. And of course, suddenly, that all felt very real indeed um, here today um, as we've been talking about water shortages and drought and maybe hopefully taking a bit more care over the 
often profligate way in which we use our water. And water, of course, is needed for life. We can't survive without water. Uh, Last autumn, we had an enormous uh, artistic representation of the earth here in this church, uh, an art installation called Gaia, uh, which uh, which hung sort of above where I'm standing here now, but huge, absolutely enormous, filling the whole of the front of the church. A reminder that um, over 70% of the earth is actually water when you look at the surface of the earth. That was the great thing as we looked at that art installation last year. Vast oceans and great seas. Although we call it the earth, we should perhaps call it the water, would be a more accurate description of this amazing planet um, on which we live. And water is a very physical thing, of course. We need it in that bodily sense to survive the planet only is alive because of the very physical presence of all that water. But there's a great strand within spiritual thinking as well, which looks to water. And that, I'm sure, is true across all the different uh, religious traditions. Uh, But my mind came to something in the Bible, in the New Testament, um, and from John's Gospel. Uh, These are words from Jesus. The water I will give will become in them, in you, a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Amazing words about the importance of water, yes, but actually that spiritual side to life as well and the way which water is a kind of metaphor, more than a metaphor, of that extraordinary gift of life. Eternal life is a funny phrase, actually. It might sound like a kind of endless monotony of a day after day after day after day going on, I don't think that's what Jesus means at all when he speaks of eternal life. I don't think that's what the Bible means when it speaks about eternal life. For me, eternal life is the life of eternity, sort of flip the words round, the life of the heavenly places, life where God is. That's what eternal life means. It's not so much an endless journey down a very long, perhaps even boring timeline. No, It's an upwards journey. It's a lifting up of our lives so that they're drawn closer to God, closer uh, to that amazing spiritual purpose that I believe uh, we all have. Well, I don't know where uh, exactly you might be uh, in the country if you're watching online or indeed even if you're here in the church, but yesterday at my home, it rained for the first time in about, well, felt like two months and I looked out of my window at the still very dry and parched ground and I could see the rain falling. And what did I do? I rushed outside and I stood there. I lifted my face up and I enjoyed feeling the rain fall on my face. And it was, well, the only word I can use is it was like a, a blessing, an extraordinary blessing. It was cool. It was refreshing. Um, all those things are true, were true in a very uh, physical sense, but also they resonated with me in that spiritual sense as well. Refreshing, life-giving, a reminder perhaps of the extraordinary gift of life that I believe comes to us from God. And a moment of thankfulness as I glanced around at my struggling vegetables and, and uh, borders and, and even the grass. Um, thankfulness for the gift of water in that very ordinary way. Thankfulness as well for the gift of life. Life as Jesus described it. A spring of water gushing up to eternal life, to the life of eternity. And I hope perhaps that spirit of thankfulness might be something that's in your hearts as well. Um, That we're not just living on a planet that's like dune, bound tight by its sandy nature uh, into the scarcity uh, of the water. No, thankfulness that we live, we're given the gift of life on a world that's beautiful, yes, and with amazing possibilities uh, for us all. So thank you for listening to me today for this short reflection. I hope, like me, you might take with you today in your heart uh, that sense of thankfulness For the gift of water, yes, actually for the gift of life and even life with God. Thank you again for listening. 
Every Wednesday, we have a reflection at one. So if you want to um, tune in again or be here again next Wednesday, then you'd be more than welcome. Thank you.